I guess I should start by making a few observations about quadratics that I didn't get to yesterday. One, a quadratic equation may have no solutions. And this might be sort of unintuitive because we have the quadratic form to the, and the quadratic form to the is a method for finding solutions. So how can we not have any solutions? We can always plug A, B, and C into the quadratic form to the. Well, what this observation comes from is the fact that the quadratic formula has a square root in it. And there's this expression under the square root. And we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So it can happen that we plug stuff into the quadratic form to the, and we do not get a real answer back again. I mean, as a, as a quick example of this, we can look at x squared plus x plus 5 equals 0. This has no solutions, which we will shortly see. So for the purposes of the quadratic form to the, we've got a 1 and we've got a 1. That's A, that's B, this 5 is C, and we plug in to the form to the, it's very mechanical, which I don't know if you'll think of that as a good thing or a bad thing. It, can make it kind of boring, I guess, or just always doing the same thing, which is taking these A's, B's, and C's and plugging them in and getting whatever you get. Negative one plus or minus the square root of one squared minus four times 1 times 5 divided by 2 times 1. Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 19 over 2. And now, this square root of negative 19 is not defined, or at least it's certainly not a real number. Some of you may have seen imaginary numbers before, um, but I would just tend to say that this isn't defined. Um, for our purposes, for most sort of real world, low level math purposes, we're not gonna be working with imaginary numbers. And what's happened graphically here is that you've got the quadratic, you've got a parabola that looks like that, 
and you ask, okay, well, when does this parabola equal zero? When does it hit the x-axis? And of course, the answer to that question is never. It's above the x-axis. It stays above the x-axis. It never hits the x-axis. So that can happen. My second observation, unless anybody has questions about this one. My second observation is that in word problems, You need to be careful with the quadratic formula. In particular, you might get two solutions. when only one makes sense. And I'm going to underline this word might, because sometimes you get two solutions and both of them make perfect sense. So this isn't a guaranteed issue that you definitely will have every time you look at an applied quadratic. It's just something to keep in mind. And even though I think I've gone on record as saying that I think these height examples are kind of banal, I'm going to do one anyway as a quick and dirty example of what I was talking about in that previous frame. Let's say an object is thrown upwards. its height after x seconds is. And this isn't a physics class, so I'm not, not going to provide a huge amount of background on where this form to the comes from. Negative 4.9 comes from Earth's gravitational constant. The 7 is a measurement of how quickly the object was thrown. The 1 is a measurement of where the object was launched from. Like if I throw a ball up, it's starting some distance above the ground, and that's measured by the one. But you don't need to know where those coefficients come from. We will just look at a specific question. When will the object hit the ground. So the first thing we need to do is set this problem up. Let me copy it the function over here, so we'll have some more 
room to work with. Negative 4.9x squared plus 7x plus 1. That is indeed what I had. This is the height. above the ground. So, how can I set this equation up? When will the object hit the ground? So, let's think this through then. We're looking at the height of the object above, well, the floor in this case. But I take the object, I launch it up, it goes in an arc. We're looking at its height above the floor. As it falls, its height is going down. The moment it actually hits the floor, it is zero meters above the floor. So, what we're asking for here, when is the height zero, we are asking to solve a quadratic equation. Let me pause briefly and start booting up our calculator software, are going to need it by the end of the day. So as far as solving this, it's the quadratic formula. It's going to be ugly because we have a kind of ugly looking decimal with that negative 4.9 is our A. But fundamentally, this is going to be a plug and play problem where you put that A, that B, that C into the quadratic formula and you get whatever it is you get. So Here is the quadratic formula. A is negative 4.9. B is 7. C is 1. So I'm just taking the values from the previous frame and copying them forward. And now, x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 there's that ugliness I talked about, times c equals 2 times negative 4.9. We want to put that into our calculator, and I feel like a lot of the time this is where I see mistakes on tests. And I mean, not serious mistakes, but just students never really have like a class that teaches them how to use the calculator. It's just sort of taught piecemeal. This is a pretty complicated equation. It's not so easy to enter it. I think it might minimize mistakes. 
if in fact, instead of trying to do all of this in one go, we first, let me fight with, here we go, we first calculate this square root. So, let's find the square root, here it is, of 7 squared minus 4 times, let me remind myself, negative 4.9 Multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything, but you can type it in if you want. And let's just get that. 8.2825. And let's uh, simplify that denominator as well. We can type this into our calculator. Over a literal decade of teaching this course has burned that number permanently into my mind. 2 times negative 4.9 is negative 9.8. And now we have something more modest to type into our calculator, but mistakes can still be made. In particular, we need to remember that if we have addition or subtraction in the top or bottom, but in this case top of a fraction, that's going to have to go in parentheses when we enter it into the calculator. And let me, because sharing the calculator causes the whiteboard to disappear, let me quickly jot this onto the physical whiteboard. Let's go to the calculator, clear everything out. We could maybe, well, we can keep using this. So negative seven plus you see plus or minus, so we're going to have to do this twice. We're going to get do plus and get one solution. We're going to do minus and get another solution. Negative 7 plus 8.2825 divided by negative 9.8. I'm going to jump that onto the physical whiteboard. This is for my reference. And let's get the other one. So, calculator trick. Um, you see entry in blue above the enter. If you press the blue second button, and then press enter, that will call up the last thing you told your calculator to do, and you can then edit it, and we can just change that addition to subtraction without having to enter all of that again. One point five five nine. 
Let me put that down so I do not succumb to the temptation of writing on our brand new monitor with the dry erase marker. So we have two solutions from this. Negative 0 0.131 and 1.559. Uh, if I throw an object up, I mean neglecting the fact that it did in fact bounce. If we uh, just throw an object up, it lands, it lands once. So it doesn't make any sense to have two solutions here. And it also doesn't make sense to have a negative solution. We don't want to say that the object will hit the ground negative 0.131 seconds after it hits the ground. So we got two solutions. But the physics of the situation say we only have one. The object hits the ground once, and then it sits there. And that's precisely what I suggested might sometimes happen. And what's going on here is in this word problem that we've been looking at, everything is restricted to the first quadrant. That is to say, everything has to be positive. The time is positive, the height is positive. The object doesn't hit the ground and then start burrowing down into it. So we're stuck in the first quadrant And our graph looks like this. And this second solution we got, the one that doesn't make any sense, that's over there in the second quadrant. So it exists mathematically, but from the physics of the situation, only the positive solution here makes sense. Now sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you use the quadratic formula and you get two solutions and both of them make perfect sense. So here, um, For example, we could keep the basic idea that an object is being thrown up. Let me maybe adjust the particulars. Let's say its height is negative 4.9x squared plus 30x plus 1. And let's ask, when will the object be 2? meters above the ground. So we discussed this yesterday. What to do, went the wrong direction there, what to do if Instead of wanting a quadratic 
to equal zero, we want a quadratic to equal something else. In this case, we're interested in when the height is two. And what was the trick we said to use? Subtract the two over. Subtract the two over, thank you. To use the quadratic form to the, we need a zero here. If we subtract two from both sides, we get that zero. On the left, one minus two. Question? So it's not from everybody, it's just the one? Uh, you're, you're combining like terms here. I mean, if you have, this equal to two, I mean, you can think that you're subtracting one, subtracting two, sorry, on the right and on the left. And then you'll just have one minus two is negative one. And this is when you're uh, dealing with only height, right? Like the height of it, like if you're telling something of... I mean... This specific example is height. I mean, like, if this, if this quadratic represented something else, something other than height, and we wanted to set it equal to two, we'd still do the same thing. Okay. I mean, we do this any time we have something other than a zero on the right. At this point, our problem becomes plug and play, maybe a little tedious, but that's the worst that can be said for it. We've got x equals negative b, so negative 30. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 30 squared minus 4 times a times c. all divided by 2 times a. And again, if you were adventurous, you could just enter that into your calculator without any intermediate steps. Maybe I'm not feeling adventurous, and I will instead, ugh, wow, give me a second, this whiteboard does not want to erase, I will instead calculate that square root separately. to try to minimize the chance of a calculator entry error. So now that that's on the whiteboard, I can share the calculator. The square root of 30 squared minus 4 times negative 
9 times negative 1. 29.672. Physics teacher might yell at me about significant digits, but I usually just end up keeping about three decimal places. So plus or minus 29.672 divided by, and we can simplify that in the denominator, divided by negative 9.8. And once again, we've simplified the situation as far as entering this into our calculator goes. But that doesn't mean it's impossible to make errors. We should be careful to use parentheses as they need to be used. And let me, I've got that on the whiteboard. Let me jot down the rest of this. So now when I share that calculator and the the whiteboard on the screen vanishes. We still have that to use as reference. Negative 30 plus 29.672 divided by negative 9.8. Zero point zero three three and changing that addition to subtraction plus or minus. 6.089. So what's up with that? We got two solutions once again. This time, both our solutions are positive. There isn't anything obviously wrong here. And in fact, there's nothing wrong, period. If you think of the physics of the situation, here's our parabola. We want to know when our parabola equals two. Well, it's two meters above the ground as it goes up and then two meters above the ground as it falls back down again. So this time it makes sense to have multiple solutions. <coughs> Any questions? Then I'll give out the classwork. Don't be intimidated by all the words. You are basically just using the quadratic formula. Just read the problem carefully. Maybe in some of these we're setting the quadratic equal to something other than zero. If you have your uh, classwork turned homework from yesterday, I'll collect that as I go around.